My mum's been doing some research into our family history and she's discovered that we had a relative who was actually killed in the First World War at some point in 1917. Mm. His name's George Francis Wilband, but we don't really have any more information than that and we'd quite like to find out where he's buried. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. You've uh, got the surname uh, and it's actually a rather unusual surname. Mm. But we'll go to the Commonwealth War Graves Commission site on the internet, very user-friendly, and we'll put the details in, even the basic details you've got, and see what that can show us. Great. Okay. Okay. Right, Kate, here we are. We've brought up the Commonwealth War Graves Commission site. As I said, it's very, very user-friendly. It was established, uh, the actual Commonwealth War Graves Commission itself was established in 1917 and commemorates all of the dead from both world wars. I think there's about 1.5 or 1.7 million people actually recorded on the site itself. It's um, intuitive, it's very, very easy to use, it's, it's really excellent. It gives you a history of the background, which we're not so interested in today, but it's well worth a look at. It's, it's, it is an interesting site to just to, to work off way around. And it starts off at the very top, which most people obviously are very, very interested in, in just search all records. So if you just click on that, Right, we've got the various fields. Now, with a name like yours, an unusual name, it's rather easy, I would think, to actually find out where he is. Obviously, with a name like Smith, or my own Sharp, maybe there were a lot more of those people actually on the database itself. So therefore, they give you various fields in which to search. Mm -hmm. We start with the top there, it says was he a casualty, or, were, do you, or do you know basically where he was were buried? And then we just put in the surname okay. here. So if you put in... That's right, and if you have his initial... George. That's right, and the war... First World War. Okay, and then I would suggest we just submit that, because again, it's an unusual name. Okay. There he is, there's only one record. So this tells me that George Wilband was a private in the army. What's this here, his service number? When you join the armed services, you, the government give you a number. Mm -hmm. So you are known by your surname and your, your number, your okay. army number. It says that he was killed on the 29th of October 1917. Most probably um, Passchendaele, Battle of Passchendaele, 3rd Ypres. In Belgium. Okay. Um, the age is unknown, so they don't know how old he was when he actually died. He was in the Royal Fusiliers, British, and is this the information to where we can actually find him if it's great? That's right. The last, the last section here is the actual cemetery itself, mm -hmm. and the, this will be the row and the grave number. So we can go to this cemetery, go to that row, mm -hmm. and there will be... Uh, George. Every grave uh, has a number and also it, it tells you which row is to be found. So you look up the, uh, the surname so I'm looking for Wilband. Okay. Which is here he is. Right. Private G. F. Wilband, Seventh Battalion Royal Fusiliers, 29th October 1917. Sorry, this is D28. Right. Here we have the first row, which is logically A. This is row. This is the first side of row A. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, they uh, they stretch away from us. One thing that, to notice also as we go up and down is that uh, on each gravestone you have the actual unit that the soldiers were served in and um, unfortunately some of them of course they're, 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 they, had, they had a body but they didn't know who that person was and if, if it was in such a, a bad state that they weren't even able to tell from any, anything, any markings on him, any regimental signs, they just put a soldier of the Great War. If they knew which regiment he was, that they, they would put again something like this on there, but it's just say again a soldier of the grave. So here we have the grave of a man in the Royal in the Skilling Fusiliers, whose badge is displayed at the top. It's uh, Private Cook, 
and it has his, his date of death, 16th of August 1917, and his age, unfortunately just 21. Um, each family was given the option of, of having their own thoughts engraved on the um, engraved on each each of the stones. Um, a lot didn't, but uh, again, a, a many many did. And this one obviously bears this: "Greater love hath no man than this." Right here we are, Kate, at uh, row two D, and um, your next of kin, Will Band, will be somewhere along this row. Okay, have a look. Oh, here he is. Ah, good. Good. So again, as, as I was saying before, you see the his unit symbol at the top, his name, and it's written in his, his regiment, the Royal Fusiliers, date, date of death and his age, 34. His service number. That's right, yes, yes, it also, also contains his service number. Got a message at the bottom as well, like the other group, saying, We loved him living, we revere him dead, which is very nice. Every uh, uh, cemetery also contains this, which is behind me, the cross of remembrance, and then just in front of it is the stone of remembrance, with uh, engraved with their name liveth forevermore. Okay, so this is the grave of Francis Ledwich, and what you'll see is that you get a lot more like crosses and reeds of someone who's quite famous. Ledwich was uh, an Irish poet uh, born in Slane, north of Dublin, and um, joined up the Royal Inskilling Fusiliers. He served in Egypt um, and out with Gallipoli, but then was brought over to France, and he was killed just here near south there's that artillery wood um, and he was killed just near here there's a memorial over here if you down there that you can see the Irish tricolour and that's where he was actually killed and the interesting thing about Ledwidge is just a few rows back is the grave of Evans or Hedwin the famous Welsh poet 